This is one of the strongest PD arrays I have. There's two stages of liquidity for the highest form of precision with my breaker. All of the calculations that go behind how these algorithms price, all of them are using the information I'm showing you here. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. But this language I'm teaching you allows you to go in and see where there are opportunities for you to go in and exploit these inefficiencies or imbalances. You're listening to the guy who codified it. I am the person. I'm the engineer. I'm the guy that put this together. This right there, you're seeing it. You're not you're gonna find you're not finding it in books. Okay? I'm writing all the books that's ever gonna be made around this right now by teaching it. I'm giving you a level of precision that is unrivaled. I studied ICT's advanced theory on breaker blocks in the 2023 mentorship and then also the core content month four lesson on breakers. I'm going to show you guys everything you need to know about them. We're going to dive straight into it from simple into complex examples. Here's everything you can expect in this video and let's dive straight into it. So this is a simple example of a bullish breaker block. Basically a low gets in place, then it creates a high, then a lower low, then a higher high. In a bullish breaker, you want to focus on the area where price created a high. The up close candle or the consecutive up close candles at that high before it makes the lower low, then the higher high, that is the bullish breaker block. So I'm going to dive into examples of when to know if it's an up just one candle or whether it's consecutive up close candles before price makes a lower low, then a higher high. In a bearish breaker, all you're doing is flipping that. So first it makes a high, then a low, then a higher high then a lower low. In the area where price creates a low, the down close candle or the consecutive down close candles before price makes that higher high, then lower low, that's going to be the breaker. ICT, when he marks out a breaker and it's a bullish breaker, he'll just add the little plus sign and label it BRK. When it's a bearish breaker, he'll do the minus sign and label it BRK as well. These are simple examples of bullish and bearish breakers, and we're going to dive more into the bullish breaker. So the up close candle or the consecutive up close candles at the high is where we want to shift our focus. So here's a screenshot from the ICT 2023 mentorship. The video is called the advanced theory on the ICT breaker. And basically we want to focus on this price like from A to B in this bullish breaker. So here we have the low, the high, the lower low. Here's the higher high. In this price like from A to B is where you want to be hunting for that up close candle or series of up close candles. The purpose of this price like is to trap retail traders long, then when price heads lower and takes out each of these lows, if there's another low down here, right, that being maybe another area for retail to put their stop losses. When price takes out these previous lows, those sell stops are getting triggered and turning into sell orders. Smart money can then go in and buy from those sellers at a lower price and then the real move happens. So breakers are used to trap retail long, take out those retail longs which turn into sell orders and smart money is buying those sell orders and then taking price higher. So in this price like from A to B, Right, we're looking for that up close candle or series of up close candles, but there's also a way that we could draw a standard deviation on this, which I'll dive into in the more complex examples. But if you want to draw a standard deviation, you can draw it from the low of A to the high of B, and you can project a negative one standard deviation to the upside. In the advanced theory on breaker video, ICT talks about that as the easiest target using a standard deviation. Basically, you're just projecting this high to this high and then a negative one standard deviation up. Don't worry, I'm gonna dive into examples on there. What ICT also talks about in this video is that the highest form of precision for breaker blocks is that it takes out two levels of liquidity. So ideally, where you see this level that says sell side liquidity, you want to see price create a low, a high, and then the lower low should take out a short term low, which it does right here. But then it should also tap into a higher time frame level of sell side liquidity, which it does here. And then once we get that displacement higher, this is smart money's footprints that they longed from the sellers at a lower price. So two stages of liquidity will provide the highest form of breakers. So now let's dive into a real chart example of what this looks like. On the four hour chart right here, this is on the NASDAQ. You can see that we have a level of sell side liquidity on the four hour time frame. We're just looking for a higher time frame low in here. And remember, if we go back to this photo, we're looking for price to create a low, high, lower low, then higher high. Or if we go back to this example, low, 
high, lower low, higher high. In this high, we're hunting for the up-close candle or series of up-close candles. So we take out a level of four hour sell side liquidity. We also do have this old low down here, which could be viewed as sell side liquidity as well. It's just a very small low in there, but nonetheless, there will be sell stops beneath there. What are we looking for in here? We're looking for the same formation that we just talked about. So we're looking for a low, a high, a lower low, then a higher high. So the first level of liquidity that gets taken out is when price creates the lower low. The second level of liquidity is when it taps into a higher time frame sell side liquidity level. So this higher time frame sell side liquidity level in this example is this four hour sell side liquidity. So where I have four hour, remember that it's the sell stops over here. Now, where can we mark out the low? So we have a low right here, then we have a high, then we have a lower low, then we have a higher high. So this is a breaker in here. Now. I'm looking at a four hour chart and there is just one up close candle in here that created a low, a high, a lower low, then a higher high. So in this example, I'm only marking out this one up close candle because that's all there is. So there are two levels of liquidity that get taken out in this example. We have beneath this low, which it kind of does expand beneath in this example, but nonetheless, it takes out a low right here and then it taps into a four hour low. Once it does that, and price starts to expand higher, when price comes back down into the breaker, if price is in a buy program, it's an area where the algorithm will refer back to and then expand towards an old high. So if the draw on liquidity is higher, right? In this example, we do have all of these highs cluster close together. This is called engineered liquidity. So when I see this and I see the market displacing for old highs, and there's a cluster of them above and then price returns back into a breaker, this is an area where I look for the algorithm to refer back to, to then act as support and then start to expand higher. Notice how we displace towards the engineer liquidity and then it retraces back down. When I'm seeing it retrace back down, I'm marking out this specific breaker in here and I'm looking for smart money to open up new net longs once it trades back into that breaker. And that's exactly what happens. It wicks out of there and starts to expand higher. What we could also do is draw out the midpoint of it. The midpoint is going to be a sensitive point. That midpoint is called the MT or the mean threshold of the breaker. Breaker blocks are order blocks, so they're classified as the same when you're marking out the midpoint. So when you're looking at like a wick or a fair value gap and you're looking at the midpoint of that, that would be the CE or the consequent encroachment. When you're looking at an order block or a breaker block or a mitigation block, propulsion block, any of those things, they're gonna be classified as mean threshold or MT when you're marking out that midpoint. It doesn't really matter the names of it. It's just note that the midpoint of a breaker is going to be a sensitive area. Now, if we drop down into a lower time frame here, this is when it starts to get confusing for people. So see these up close candles in here, right? What you could do is you could refine that area just to that candle high. ICT talks about that in the advanced theory on breakers in the 2023 mentorship, but the breaker is this series of up-close candles. So if I'm looking at a one-hour chart in here, notice how we have four up-close candles in a row. I'm going to mark out all of those four when price creates the low. So let me mark it out real quick. We have a low, a high, a lower low, then a higher high. So if there is a series of up-close candles as price is creating this high, I'm gonna mark out the entire series for the breaker. So if it's just one up close candle at a high, and then right below that there's a down close candle, I'm only gonna mark out that one up close candle. But let's say there's five up close candles in a row, then I can mark out all of the five in a row. What ICT also talks about in the 2023 mentorship video is that even though it is all of these up close candles, right? The last up close candle is going to be the most sensitive point because that is really where the change in the state of delivery occurred for price to start manipulating lower to target sell stops. So if we look at this one hour time frame, right, that last up close candle in here is going to be the most sensitive point of the order block. If you go to a higher time frame, it does make it a little bit more clear because we just have an up close candle. And what do we have? We have the same exact formation that we just talked about low, high, lower low, then higher high. So why isn't this a breaker, Dan? Why wouldn't you mark this as the breaker? Well, this last up close candle, right? This is where the breaker is because it started to manipulate higher there and then it traded into the sell stops. And this is where the inception of that move started the delivery to the downside into the sell side and then it started delivering higher. So this is the area where it's gonna to wanna to refer back to 
because this is where smart money took price lower. They bought the sell stops. Now they trade a price higher that it returns to the breaker. They're opening up new net longs over here. This is a bullish example of the breaker block. Let's dive into another example using standard deviations. So using that same logic, we're going to be looking for two levels of liquidity to get ran. So we're looking for a low, a high, a lower low, then a higher high. So we look for the liquidity beneath the low when it creates the lower low. And then we also look for it to tap into a higher time frame level of liquidity. So a lot of ICT YouTubers that just want to copy ICT's content, they won't dive into the specifics. But I'm telling you, I've studied so much on these breakers and I'm just repeating exactly what ICT said. So all the things that I'm teaching you here, you can go watch in the core content lessons or also in the advanced theory on breakers. I give ICT all the credit for this stuff. This is not my own findings. So on the weekly time frame. We have this old level of sell side liquidity. Price was in a buy program in the higher time frame. So when price returns down to sell stops, right? Retail traders who went long, right? Think about all the retail traders in here that got stopped out when price took out this old low. Because this is what retail would look at as a level of support, right? So if price is retesting an old high like this, what is retail doing? They're buying right here. Where's their stop loss going to be beneath this old low? So it taps into the weekly sell side. What are we looking for? We're looking for a low, a high, a lower low, then a higher high. So if we dive into this example, this is exactly what we see here. We have a low, we have a high, we have a lower low, then a higher high. So where are the two levels of liquidity that got taken out? Well, we have this low, the breaker, and then we have the weekly sell side liquidity. So the highest form of precision for breakers, it's going to take out two levels of liquidity. We, if we draw that in an example, it's going to be the liquidity beneath this previous low, like there. And then it's going to also tap into another higher time frame level of sell side. Once it displaces away from it in here, right? If you want to be conservative, right? The best thing to do is wait for a close above the breaker. If you guys would like to see more educational content using ICT's concepts, I do post my draw on liquidity on the S&P 500 in the NASDAQ real time. I do not do any live trading, but in this ICT tab, I will share my thoughts on the market throughout the day. This was yesterday. We were looking for the S&P 500 to trade into the buy stops. So the trade that you saw me took, members knew that price was going to trade into those buy side liquidity levels above beforehand. As you can see, it ended up targeting the buy stops on ES. A lot of the times I will show lower time frame setups as well. Yesterday, I just showed the higher time frame, looking for price to take out both of these highs in here. You can see it did end up trading into the buy stops. So there was a few nice setups in there. You can see this is how I traded it the other day. Price returning into a fair value gap and then trading higher. So if you guys would like to see me call the draw on liquidity real time, make sure you check out my Discord below. There is a three-day free trial. I also do trade recaps where I make exclusive videos. I did a one-hour back test session showing how to frame a trade using higher and lower time frame analysis. I also do do market reviews where I cover trades that I take a few times a week. And I just kind of show my thought process behind why I'm picking certain PDRAs, why I'm picking certain highs and lows to target. All that is in my discord if you guys are interested check out that first link below now once you get more advanced at this in due time you will be able to identify when a breaker will form so as price is taking out the sell stops once you get more advanced at this you can anticipate a break above the breaker block which i'm going to show you how i did that and took a live trade later in the video so this is only a 12 hour chart what happens when you go down to a four hour time frame dan this is an example of when to use the consecutive up close candles so notice how on the four hour chart right here, price makes a low, a high, and then drops lower, makes a lower low, then a higher high. So we have low, high, lower low, higher high. In this price leg where it creates the high, we're looking for an up close candle or series of up close candles. Notice how there is two here. In this example, if I was looking at a four hour chart, I would not just mark out this one. Why? Because there's a consecutive amount of up close candles in this high so ict if you look on his twitter this is always how he identifies breakers right this last up close candle is the sweet spot of the breaker block meaning this is going to be a sensitive point of it but the consecutive up close candles are the entire breaker right so i would mark it out if i was looking at a four hour chart i'll mark out the consecutive so it's pretty simple once you really think about it. In a bullish breaker at the high, you're looking for an up close candle, or if there's consecutive up close candles, mark out the consecutive, right? In a bearish breaker, same exact thing. At the low, you're looking for a down close candle or consecutive down close candles. If there's consecutive, you mark that out. In this example, there is consecutive, so I'm marking those out, right? 
if we go back to a 12 hour time frame, right, you can see that it really looks pretty simple on this time frame. So all we get is a low high, lower low, then a higher high. Price takes out the first level of liquidity by taking out the low of the breaker, and then the second level of liquidity by taking out that weekly sell side. So we have two stages of liquidity that were ran. Since it ran two and it starts expanding higher, what are gonna be targets to the upside? Well, it's gonna to wanna to target buy stops. Why is it gonna to wanna to target buy stops? Because this indicates that smart money has bought from sellers at a lower price. When price starts distributing back higher, if smart money's long, who do they need to sell to? They need to sell to buyers at a higher price. So above old highs is buy side liquidity or buy stops. They're gonna to wanna to target this 4291 level. If you wanna look for a low hanging fruit target, which ICT talks about that you could literally make an income just using this target specifically once it confirms it. So in this price leg right here, from low to high to lower low to higher high, you want to focus on the low to high. In the advanced lesson on breakers, ICT marks this out as leg A, and then he marks the high out as leg B. In this leg from low to high or from A to B, you're gonna mark a standard deviation from the swing low to the swing high. You're drawing a standard deviation on that. So for those who want my FIB targets, you can go ahead and pause the screen right here. This is what my FIB looks like. I'll even scroll down a little bit. And basically as a low hang fruit, you could target the negative one standard deviation. And this is the easiest, the lowest hanging fruit target that you could aim for, for just an easy target to the upside. And if we look at this previous example, we would do from this low to this high. Now, Dan, why from that low to that high? Well, remember, low, high, lower low, higher high. What do we have on this chart? Low, high, lower low, higher high. So from this swing low, this is A, to this swing high, this is B, we're looking at a negative one standard deviation. So this is the easiest target to go for, but when you know price is gonna trade higher into buy stops, you could even hold for longer. It's not limited to just targeting a negative one standard deviation. If we go down into a lower time frame here, right, this is what this would look like. So we have from low to high, right, we could target that negative one standard deviation. Um, if you want me to draw the little A to B on this, this is pretty much what it looks like. We have from A to B, remember A is the low, B is the high. If we go back to this previous example, we do have A to B, low to high. Go back to this low to high negative one standard deviation it can go much further beyond that we could also do in the advanced lesson on breakers ict talks about pairing these standard deviation levels with a level of buy side so if we want to add more we could add negative three negative 3.5 you could go all the way up to negative six negative 6.5 he goes all the way up to 10 i've seen so you can start pairing these standard deviation levels with buy stops. So we have this level of buy stops, which is relatively close to the negative three. So if price starts expanding higher and it starts getting close to these highs, that can be an area to target. So I'm about to dive into a bearish breaker and then we'll be diving into eye training and I'll be showing you guys certain examples of which candles to select. But so far what we've identified is that a bullish breaker is a low to high to lower low to higher high. In the high, in this price leg, you're looking for an up close candle or a series of up close candles to select. That is the bullish breaker block. The highest form of breakers is going to be a breaker that takes out two levels of liquidity, which would be price taking out the previous low of the breaker or leg A, and then also tapping into a higher time frame level of sell side liquidity. So as price is trading higher, we can mark out low to high with a standard deviation from A to B or low to high. And we could target the negative one standard deviation for a low hanging fruit target. Let's dive into a bearish example now. The same exact thing, but it's flipped. A bearish breaker, this is what it looks like. We have a low, a high, a lower low, then a higher high. In this price leg, when price is creating the higher high, we want to see two forms of liquidity taken out the one above the buy side here, and then tapping into a higher time frame PD array. So let's dive back into this example real quick, and I'll just show you very quickly, high, low, higher high, lower low. So if we were to mark out A to B on this, it would be from this high to low, and that's where we would draw our standard deviations from. So in this price leg where it starts to create the low, we're looking for a down close candle or a series of down close candles. When price breaks beneath it, right, again, there are ways to predict when price is up here, that it will take out this previous low, which I'll dive into a little bit later. But if you're 
newer, just make sure price closes beneath this previous low. That'll be the easiest way to not get caught offside. So when price takes out that previous low, looking for down close candle or series of down close candles, when price returns to it, that's an area where the algorithm will refer back to, retest as resistance, and then start to trade lower. So if we dive back into this example, right, two levels of buy side we want to see taken out. So let's look at a real chart example of a bearish breaker block. We have this old high right here, which is buy side liquidity. Remember, we're looking for two forms to get taken out. We're looking for the buy stops above the high of the breaker, and then also a higher time frame buy side liquidity level. So when people are looking for breakers in here, right, if you're looking for bearish breakers in here, that would be the wrong idea because price is delivering from sell side down here into the buy side liquidity. So it needs to take out those buy stops so smart money can go short. Once it starts to trade lower, right, this is where we're looking for this bearish formation. We're looking for a high, a low, a higher high than a lower low, just like I covered in this example. So when we zoom in on that, in this example, we have a high, a low, a higher high than a lower low. So this is all you're looking for, high, low, higher high, lower low. Right, the last down close candle or consecutive down close candles in the price leg that creates the low. You're looking for a down close candle or consecutive down close candles. That's the bearish breaker. In this example, this where price creates a low, we have one down close candle. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that out and extend that out in time. This is the bearish breaker. You can mark out the midpoint that is going to be mean threshold or the MT. It's going to be a sensitive point of the breaker. You're marking it out and calling it mean threshold because breaker blocks are order blocks. When price returns to it, right, if we're looking at a lower time frame in here, like a one hour chart, right, I would not be identifying this as the breaker. This is time distortion and manipulation. Since on the four hour chart, this is the low, this is the price leg that started that delivery to the upside, right? I'm ignoring all of the price action in here. If I was just looking at a one hour chart, Notice how we have three consecutive down close candles. I would mark out the consecutive down close candles. Notice how the algorithm is referring back to this set of down close candles in here rather than these. That's because this is time distortion and manipulation up here. How do I know that? We'll zoom out. Look at the four hour time frame. This down close candle started that delivery higher to take out the buy stops. When it closes beneath that breaker, it's going to refer back to this instead. So it's pretty simple. At the low of the breaker, you're looking for a down close candle or consecutive down close candles. As price is creating the higher high and in this price like to the upside, this is just manipulation. So at the same time, while it's creating a higher high, it's taking out buy stops, but it's creating a power of three. So you're getting accumulation, manipulation out of the range and then distribution lower. How can we draw a standard deviation on this price leg? We're looking at A to B or high to low. A to B, we're drawing a standard deviation from A to B. Here, A to B, right? If you want to see me draw it, I'm just clicking it up here and dragging it to the low. Negative one is the lowest hanging fruit target. If you want to pair um, some other standard deviations with it, target a negative one to 1.5. And if the draw on liquidity is lower, if it's going to target sell stops, which I did cover on my Twitter, if you go back to early October, I did anticipate for this entire drop when price was right here. I called the drop lower. So I'm not saying that to brag, but I'm, I'm using that as a reference that as price is trading lower, it's going to likely go past the negative one standard deviation. But we can use this area for a retracement back into a bearish PD array. What PD array could that be? It could be the bearish breaker. It's going to respect that and then distribute lower into the sell side here, here, and here, and also target lower standard deviation levels. So that is a bearish breaker block right? The highest form, it's going to take out two levels of liquidity. What are those two levels of liquidity? It's going to be above this previous high right here. So this is the first leg that gets taken out. We have the high, the low, the higher high. When it's creating the higher high, it's taking out one level of liquidity. And then we want to see it tap into a higher time frame level of buy side. That's the second leg. If you're advanced, you could Look to short up here if price is in a higher time frame sell program. I recommend waiting for price to close beneath the breaker and then retest it. That's where you can look to get short and then target lower levels of sell side. So now we're going to be doing a little bit of eye training. And I want you to pause the video right here for a second and try to identify the breakers that you see and then align that with the breakers that I 
mark out. So go ahead and pause in a couple seconds. I'm going to start identifying them. So I'm looking at bearish and bullish breakers in here. So if we zoom into this leg of price action right here, we do have a bullish breaker block. It creates a low, a high, then a lower low, then a higher high. So it takes out two levels of liquidity, the liquidity beneath this low, and then also the liquidity beneath this low. Once it expands higher, we're looking for the up close candle, right, at the high. You could also look at it like this, that price created a low right here, then a high, then a lower low, then a higher high. Either way you look at it, it's a valid breaker in here. Just when you view it like this, that the low is created here, high, then a lower low, it took out four, uh, two forms of liquidity in here, beneath this low and then beneath this previous low. When price trades higher, closes above here. If price is in a buy program, it's gonna refer back to this area. And this is an area where smart money will open up new net longs and then start to target the buy stops above. So this is a bullish breaker block. You can see that the mean threshold, which is the 50%, is respected very nicely in here. And that starts to expand higher off of that. What we could do is we could draw a standard deviation from this swing low to this swing high. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm identifying this as the low, this as the high, this is the lower low, then the higher high. The negative one would be a target. If you weren't looking at the two forms of liquidity and you just wanted to say that this is a low, high, lower low, you could do that as well. You could draw a standard deviation from this swing low to this swing high. Either way does work here. Now this is another bearish breaker up here because price creates a high, a low, a higher high than a lower low. Well, damn, why aren't you marking out this one? That's the last up or down close candle before a high and then a lower low. Well, there's a few reasons here. As price stops at this low and starts delivering higher, this is the low that changed the state of delivery and started to target the buy stops above. Everything in here is just manipulation and time distortion. So it's just consolidating slowly, right? Boring traders out of the market. And then we get the sharp drop lower. So since price is in a higher time frame buy program, I'm anticipating for price to break above there, close above it, retest it as support. And this becomes an inversion breaker block. Price can refer to that and then expand off of that higher. Notice how it's respecting the bullish breaker and disrespecting the bearish breaker. We could use this feedback to indicate that the draw on liquidity is higher, or in other words, meaning that smart money is long and wants to target higher levels. So if we zoom in in here, there is another bullish breaker. We have a low, high, lower, low, higher, high. In this price leg, right, since we're already anticipating for higher prices, right, it just takes out this one level of sell side and it starts to expand higher. Price creates a high, low, higher high. In this price leg where it creates the high, we're looking for an up close candle or a series of up close candles. See how there's two in a row? In this example, I would mark out those two in a row because there is two. If there was just one, I would just mark out the one, but there's two. So this is another bullish breaker. The algorithm, notice how it wicks into that and then starts to expand higher and starts targeting the buy stops above. When the draw on liquidity is higher, that's when you want to be hunting for these setups. So in this example, if you were to go down into a lower time frame, there are two forms of liquidity that are taken out, right? You could look at it like this, where it creates a low, high, lower low. And then in that lower low, it also takes out this previous low. So notice how I'm drawing out the two up close candles in the one hour time frame. This is the bullish breaker block, right? Price creates a low, high, lower low, then a higher high and closes above it. If we do zoom in on this price leg, notice how it just trades into it slightly and then trades higher. In the advanced lesson on ICT breakers, ICT will go down into a lower time frame and he'll actually refine that down to the last up close candle in here. So when price is in a heavy buy program, sometimes it will just re return back into that last up close candle and then expand off of that. Now he's refining it into a smaller area. So this is what I did on Twitter one time where I basically posted that even though on the higher time frame, right, the breaker might look like this, right? It might look like these two up close candles. You can then go down to a lower time frame, And if price is in a strong buy program, sometimes it can just refer back to that last up close candle as the most sensitive point and then start to expand off of that. Notice how as it's targeting buy side liquidity, you have bullish fair value gaps acting as support. That's because the draw on liquidity is higher. So let's dive into some more eye training and then I'll show you guys the live trade that I took on the S&P 500 the other day, calling a breaker before it was a breaker and also how you can do that. So in this example, we do have a bullish and bearish breaker block. You can see that price took out the one hour sell side liquidity here, and it also took out this short term low beneath here. So basically we're looking for the same formation here. We're looking for a low, high, lower, low, higher, high. Okay. 
what do we have here? We have a low, high, lower low, higher high. When price is creating that high, we're looking for an up close candle or series of up close candles. Notice how we have two in a row right here. So we have two up close candles, a drop lower, then a push higher. I'm gonna mark out the two up close candles. You can just refine that to the last up close candle, but the series of up close candles in a row counts as the breaker here. Price consolidates in that, right? This is just the market not allowing participants on both sides of the market. It's in a seek and destroy condition where it's targeting stop losses on both sides, and then it eventually sees expansion higher. So it takes out two forms of liquidity. So when it takes out the low of the breaker, that's one level of liquidity, and then it taps into a higher time frame level of sell side. That is going to be the highest form of precision for breakers. As price trades higher, if we look back on a four hour chart, we have buy side liquidity or an old high up in here. Price takes that out. If we look at an hourly time frame, what are we looking for? We're looking for a bearish formation here. So we're gonna mark out that same thing. We have a high, low, higher high, lower low. Notice how on the one hour time frame it just creates one big down close candle, trades higher, then lower. So this is what the formation looks like. We have a high, low, higher high, lower low. Okay, so I would just mark out that one down close candle, extend that out. Once it closes beneath it, if price is in a sell program, it'll retest that as resistance and then start trading towards lower sell side liquidity, which we do have right here, takes out this internal level of sell side right there. If I were to go down to a lower time frame on the 15 minute, notice how we have these series of down close candles. If I was just looking at a 15 minute, I would mark out the series of down close candles. So we have one, two, three, four, those are the down close candles that are the breaker. Why not this up in here? Why is this not the breaker dam? Well, because this is what started the delivery to the upside to target the buy stops. So this is all manipulation and time distortion or in the high of the breaker. This is all manipulation in here. So how can we draw standard deviations on this price leg? Remember this is A and then this is also B. So we could draw standard deviation from the high of A to the low of B and we could target a negative one to the downside. So that is a very easy low hanging fruit target. If the draw on liquidity is lower, it will target sell stops or lower standard deviations. For this example, where is A and where is B? Well, we're gonna mark it from this low down here to this high, because it's going to be from the low to the high of the breaker. So we could draw a standard deviation from this swing low to this swing high. The negative one is going to be a target. That's the easiest target. If the draw on liquidity is higher, it will target buy stops as well. So now let's dive into an example of how I traded a breaker before it was a breaker. Now, let's say price starts expanding higher. So once I see something like this in the market where price returns to a bullish breaker block, and then it expands off of that with speed and velocity, disrespecting bearish PD arrays on the left side of the chart and expanding for an old high, meaning it's trading higher with institutionally sponsored candles like this one, just extreme displacement upwards. This is a clear draw on liquidity for me. This is an example of how I traded this live. When price returns back beneath an old low and the draw on liquidity is higher, just like I showed right here, I'm anticipating for price to trade into an old high. Let's say price is up here, right? And then it runs a level of sell side. So see these old lows, it trades beneath it takes out the sell side liquidity and then creates a shift in market structure here with a fair value gap, I can long that fair value gap and anticipate for this to become a breaker block. So price trades higher, I long down in here with a stop loss beneath here and I'm anticipating a break above this. And if we break above that, what would it do? It would form a breaker. And then price ends up targeting higher buy side liquidity. So if we let this play out, right, this was like A to B of the breaker, draw standard deviation from A to B, mark out negative one, right? That is a low hang fruit target. I'm saying I'm trading the breaker before it breaks the high. There are levels to this and I could take off at that negative one, right? But what am I anticipating? I'm anticipating for price to trade into the buy side because just like I showed in this example, that would be like the one hour draw on liquidity target. So price returns back to a level of sell stops. Notice how I'm saying reversal here because I'm anticipating for price to trade up to here. When price is in a buy program, it's only returning back beneath old lows for smart money to buy sell stops. So I'm anticipating this would be like another entry right here. I could long that, if I do skip it back a little bit, I could long right there. And then I could target, right, for price to take above here and that would create another breaker. So if we let this play out, I don't enter there, but that would have been another place to enter. And as you can see, price is just expanding for the buy side liquidity above. 
and this was a live trade example as you can see i'm up about 76 ticks right there and then price ends up heading for the buy stops so that was an example of how you could trade it beforehand if we do zoom into this price leg we have a bullish breaker in here where price creates a low high lower low then a higher high this is the breaker that i was trading in the video and you may see such a small price area up here and that is because i used the idea of a five minute breaker we have a low high lower low higher high and then i went down into a one minute chart and i basically just refined that price area just like ict does so i'm just only using the last up close candle since price was in a strong buy program and you could see that it didn't even return to it and it just started to expand higher when i see stuff like this it's the algorithm tipping its hand to me that it's in a hurry to reach the buy stops above which is what it ended up doing so that's gonna be it for this video if you guys would like to see more content like this make sure you smash that like button if this gets to 350 likes i will do a video like this on a PDRA of your choice. So let me know down below. Catch you guys later.